Let's talk about Disney. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of focus on this don't say gay bill in the state of Florida. Well, that was just signed into law by Governor Ron DeSantis. Disney was under fire from those inside of Disney, I guess, some Disney employees who felt that the company wasn't outspoken enough uh, and came out against their new CEO. Hey, we should be we should be out here marshalling our our woke forces against this bill. We should be standing firm where the, the where we are the state's largest employer in Florida. We should be standing up against Governor DeSantis uh, and the and Disney did not. Disney did say, though, that it, it uh, does not agree with this legislation and it plans to fight it in courts um, and hopes to get it struck down. But wait, Jer- wait, how does Disney intend to fight this in court? A, a ruling about public school in Florida. Good question. I mean, I think though they will probably funnel money to any kind of court battles and any kind of lawsuits that unfold, and they will I maybe try to challenge it so that it goes to the Supreme Court. I don't exactly know how Disney plans to to do that, but they're going to throw their weight behind it. So, but that was sort of the public face of it. Now we're learning as journalists have now managed to get their hands on a meeting that unfolded yesterday at, among Disney executives, and it is just cringeworthy ridiculous. So Disney executives talking about how they are basically marshalling a plan to include as many, uh, you know, transgendered uh, LGBTQ individuals in all of their programming. They're going to war uh, with their content now. So this was a leaked video. There's a couple of leaked videos from different executives during the Zoom meeting that got out. Uh, And I'll kind of play a few of them here. Um, from some different Disney executives. Take a listen. It's like I love Disney's content. I grew up watching, you know, all of the classics. They have been a huge, like, informative part of my life. But at the same time, like, I worked at small studios most of my career, and I'd heard, you know, you can hear whispers. Like, I'd, I'd heard things like, oh, you know, they won't let you show this at a Disney show. And I'm like, okay. So I was a little, like, sus when I started. And, but then my experience was bafflingly the opposite of what I had heard on my little pocket of like, you know, proud family, Disney TVA. Um, the showrunners were super welcoming Meredith Roberts and like the, the, our leadership over there has been so welcoming to like my, like not at all secret gay agenda. And so like, I, I feel like I felt like it was, I mean, like, Maybe it was that way in the past. But so I guess I've got like, my, I, so Disney, uh, here, I'm here, you know, I've got my super not so secret gay agenda. Like I, that's what I want in all of my content. It, that's, I'm going to include that as much as I can with LGBTQ characters, et cetera. I've um, uh, not at all secret gay agenda, um, adding queerness to as much children's programming as I can. Um, that's one of the executives speaking. Another video um, from another Disney corporate executive, President Carrie Burke, explaining how her experience as a mother raising a trans child and one pansexual child has helped her realize that there aren't enough queer lead characters for Disney movies and shows. Um, and she says, we have all these LGBTQIA characters in our stories um, and yet we don't have enough leads. So they're in there, but we need to make them lead characters. And now this is what we're doing. We need to, we want a minimum of 50% of all of these characters to be this. Take a listen. I'm, I'm here as a mother of, of two queer children, actually. Um, uh, one transgender child, um, um, and one pansexual child. Um, and, and also as a leader, um, and that was the thing that really got me because I have heard so much from so many of my colleagues over the course of the last couple of weeks um, in open forums and through emails and phone conversations. And um, I feel a responsibility to speak um, not just for myself, but for them, um, to all of us. We, we had a we had an open forum last week at 20th where um, again, the home of of really incredible groundbreaking LGBTQIA stories over the years where um, one of our execs stood up and said, you know, we only have a handful of queer leads in our content. And I went, what? That can't be true. And I, and I, and I realized, oh, it it actually is true. We have many, many, many LGBTQIA characters in our stories. And, and, and yet we don't, have enough leads um, and narratives in which gay characters just just get to be characters um, and and not have to be about 
gay stories. And so... So this is Disney's diversity and inclusion manager also speaking about this, saying that at their theme parks now, they're going to remove all gender-based greetings. You can't say hi to a little boy. You can't say hi to a little girl. Um, it has to be, hey, friend. Hey, dreamer. Yes. So we're going to say, hey, friend. Hey, dreamer, instead of a boy or a girl. Um, on the on and on the list goes. The, the one that I wanted to play here is that they're going to start to inc include trackers. Trackers is their goal. The pro production coordinator, Alan March, they want to create a tracker to ensure a sufficient amount of gender non-conforming characters in all of their content. Trans, bisexual characters appearing in Disney programming. So that is the goal by putting a tracker in all of their programming. Space. Yeah, um, I've had the privilege of working with the Moon Girl team for the last two years, and they've been really open to exploring queer stories. And part of, I'm on the production side, uh, part of uh, the work that I feel like I can put in is um, making sure that we take place in modern day New York. So making sure that that's like an accurate reflection of New York. So I put together like a tracker of our background characters to make sure that we have like a, the full breadth of expression and uh, we got into a very similar conversation, Carrie, of like, oh, all of our like gender nonconforming characters are in the background. And so it's not just a numbers game um, of how many LGBTQ plus characters you have. We got the further, uh, the, the more centered a story is on a character, the more nuanced you get to get into their story. And especially with like trans characters, you can't see if someone is trans. There's not one way to look trans. And so kind of the only way to have these like canonical trans characters, canonical asexual characters, canonical bisexual characters is to give them stories where they can like be their whole selves. So that's the secret meeting that was leaked. Um, well, that is true. The person at the center of the gaze gets their story told, right? At the gaze. The, the center of the gaze, right? The center of the story. The, that's why we call him the protagonist, whoever the story revolves around. Gaze meaning eyes. You're, oh, my, yes, uh, gaze. G-A-Z-E. Okay. Not, yeah. not gay people. <laughs> okay. I know. Right. I'm like, okay, what? The center of the gaze. I'm like, well, who is the center of Natalie the gaze? Natalie just went full on. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think you, you no, that's, okay, I just that's to only clarify. one of the many letters we're supposed to say. I'm, ta I'm talking about the gaze, like the, you know, whatever, whose story gets told, who lives, who dies, who tells their story. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So I get it. Right. So the people in the background... If you're trans and you're in the background, we don't know you're trans. So now we have a tracker we're going to build in so that we really know that that person who's like a, a bit player in the in the show, in, in the character, is is trans. Like we're really going to make sure that that's They're just prominent. Okay, but what's so wrong with quantifying how many people we have that, are, that have diverse stories? When only one type of, of person has had their story told for, you know, most of modern history. Uh, there's no, there's nothing about telling other stories. It's about, it's, it's about like eliminating gender identity. That's my biggest gripe with this. You're going to, so now it, w n we can't even figure out what a woman is. We can't even figure out what a boy is. We can't say hi to a boy. We can't say hi to, we just have to call you a dreamer. We can't, uh, you, you know, you're a little boy wearing a, a Mickey shirt and we, oh, hi, you, Right, Welcome. but I, mean, I also, did, we've taken our kids to Disney many times, and it used to be protocol that you called all little girls princesses. And I am not one who thinks the typical princesses are empowering characters. And I always was kind of like, mm, because studies do show that little girls who over-identify with the Disney princesses have lower self-esteem and body image markers. And so I'm fine with not, although I don't need a renaming of them, which now we don't call them princesses, we call them heroines, Right. But not all of them are heroines of their own stories. And so, you know, that's sort of maybe over empowering. I'm more concerned with actual sexualization of children's programming, period. Right. I don't need it. I'm fine if one of the characters has gay dads or they have, you know, trans families. But I don't want in children's programming sexuality period i actively avoid that for my children right up to a certain age when i think it's appropriate right and so i understand that there's this like there's an offensive bit about the don't say gay bill well a lot of it's quite offensive but i think the intention of like hey let's not sexualize children before they're ready 
is good, but it, it, it gives people a lot of opportunity to go to jail or get sued for mentioning so-and-so's gay dads, right? Well, I don't even know why it's such an obsession to even, like, no, I don't care. Like, I, if I'm watching a character, I want the story. I don't care what they identify as. I don't care their sexuality. I don't care about any of that stuff. And it's like, now they feel like they just got to, like, put it on our face so they can, what, get virtue points for, hey, we got our quota of, you know, this number right. of that's, people. I think th that's the big reason. I mean, that's the reason I wanted to cover the story is, like, they're going to flood all of their content with, all of the like we're going to beat each other over the head with this now so that we have to flood it's like us. that microsoft event quota. right did you see that microsoft event where they're like hi my name is mike i'm a i'm a straight male uh i identify or my pronouns are he she before they like give their talk at, at a microsoft event yeah well you know but, i'm okay with with presenting various life situations for instance uh my kids like the reboot of high school musical the the series not the movies and there are gay characters in that and that's appropriate for that i think for that age group and i'm fine with that but sophia the first does not need any kind of sexualization period sophia doesn't like boys sophia doesn't like girls sophia is not other she doesn't have gender dysmorphia or body dysphoria or anything i don't want it in that programming right but I'm okay, like for age appropriate type things. So why are we in a rush to sexualize small children? Right. I think that's what the bill does, right? Which is it may not, uh, you may not do any uh, or sexual orientation or gender identity may not occur in kindergarten through grade three in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students in accordance with state standards. And so Disney employees holding this meeting saying that they're going to push back in court and they're going to take this as far as they can. So, but and they're, then meanwhile, they're, Governor DeSantis says, I, I don't care. I don't care what a big corporation says. I don't care what, a, Yes. you know, he's like, okay, you, that, I don't care what big corporations are going to tell me to do like in our state. So, but there absolutely is a method to this madness to sexualize children early. Right. And so there's this sort of this woke, like you have, if you are against it, against sexualizing your children really early, then you're not part of the woke liberal, you know, so that we can what, right? Make, make everybody like you or make everybody confirm everybody else's choices or what have you, right? It's like gender, the, the, this sort of need to over gender, genderify, genderify everything. We're like, that's for boys, that's for girls. Um, is what is causing this division when it, to me, it's, it's crazy to then like push it on small children so that we break but, apart harmful gender norms. So I think, I mean, there's a lot to unpack here and so I'll go on a bit of a rant, but, but I think it, I think there is a certain amount of, so it has to be in your face and it has to be loud because if you look at like the LGBT community, this is not new. They've been around yeah. for as long as history has sure. been recorded. And so yeah. being quiet got them essentially like arrested, murdered. They would be beaten to death, like like trying to just be, live their lives quietly. People still attacked them. So there has to be some kind of pushback to normalize in the minds of people that this is OK, that we, we get to live our lives without yes. this constant onslaught. I mean, you look, you look back at like, like people like Alan Turing, who basically won World War II right. and was arrested because he was gay. Because yes, like gay, right? an absolute war hero, like a, like a worldwide war hero, and yet yes. was arrested because he was gay. So it's like because that can happen, the only way that doesn't happen is if you are normalized. If if you can get to that point where a character can just be gay, and that's fine, but it's like they can't just do that. But it is fine. They, uh, there, that's a lot of people are totally let him fine with that the point, character. No, no, no. But, they, but they can't just do that because 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 if you if you're quietly doing that, then you're back to that like. It's okay for you to be gay. Just don't talk about it. Don't put it in my face. People say that all the time. I don't care if you're gay. Just don't put it in my face. But when it wasn't being put in people's faces, there was still so much violence and so much pushback. Like it was literally illegal. And it's still illegal. Like in many yes. countries, it is yes. absolutely illegal to live your life. So you right, have but that's to not fight what back. People that are saying this, like me, are not saying don't show gay, don't be gay, don't. That's just I don't. Why does it have to be the main focus? That's what I'm talking about. You like you're 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 making it a well, point if, to if make you ever that. Seen a, a, have you ever a seen a rom com? You ever seen a rom com? What is the mm -hmm. main focus in a rom com? It is heterosexuality. Is, it's heterosexuality. Yes. Why are you not upset by that? Why are you not upset that the entire point of that movie was heterosexuality? Because that's not what I see. 
Maybe that's what <laughs> well, then, you see, then, but I don't see heterosexual. I just see a movie. I see a good story. That's fine. So, like, that's fine. And that's all but, I want. But it, so then, be... was Brokeback Mountain a good story? No, that's a gay movie, right? And so, can we have more stories that are just a movie, just plot based, right? But again, that are age appropriate, right? There should be no gender, no sexuality in children's programming at a certain, up to a certain age. Like I said, I, I think Disney does a good job of, of High School Musical. They're not like bit characters, the ones that are gay. It's fine, it's good. I'm happy to see these stories in an age appropriate manner. Right, again, coming back to the book that uh, that you read on, what is it called? Um, Irreversible Damage. Irreversible Damage. So this idea that somehow, and we hope that, you know, that somehow kids are at a certain age where they're, they're, they're being influenced by social media and other media uh, forms of media push, pushing them in a direction that they're not even ready for or right. can't make a decision for their own bodies yet. Um, and th then they get some sort of like they're, they're taking kind of drugs or hormone drugs. They're taking right. or they're getting some sort of a, a surgery that's preventing them from uh, from actually becoming a man or a woman um, is really troubling. And so to have these like social media interventions before they're ready for it. Yes. You know, is troubling. Yeah. So Dirty Miner Apparel said, why does this even need to be in any programming? Oops. Uh, or children's or content. children's content. I would rather not even expose my eight and 11 year old daughters to this. Well, by 11, you sort of have to. Otherwise, they're exposed and you're not a part of it. And that is what scares me more than anything else is that the first conversations they have about it are not conversations you can participate in. Right. And I mean, I guess, so and I guess having... that's kind of kind of to my point is that like. If, if you're going to take that stand that like I and until my kid is like eight or 11, I don't even want him to know that, that, yes. that the LGBT community exists. Are you taking steps to make sure that there's no heterosexuality normatives being pushed on them also? Because it's yeah, like, the antithesis is a good question. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's it, like I, I get this this whole thing because it, it like you literally are talking about somebody that's been oppressed for so long, but not in every culture. I mean, like. You take like like samurai homosexuality was very very common, and I know mm -hmm. people don't like to hear that because you know they were the the badass warriors of history. But these these are things yeah. like they were very common. Greek Olympians and, they yeah, had Greeks. like their little boys with them all the time. That was their thing, so that they could keep women virginal. Is right. that's is they they kept little boys with them. Yeah. Um, so yes, it's not it's definitely not a new thing. Um, Rumpel Gold in our chat says, as a trans man, I'm not happy about the push for trans media. I'd be curious why. I mean, that's you know, we can sit here and say, like, okay, these big corporations, these woke corporations have this agenda to push certain things. Um but here's the thing. Disney is responsible for girls wearing princesses, right? And then there's this sort of subset of people who say boys should not wear that. And I think this is where the breakdown gets is like things that are gendered come from this gendered programming. So like, oh, the princesses are just for the girls. And it needs, if we're really breaking down norms, we should break down just any kind of things that are gendered, not people, not sexuality. That has nothing to do with sexuality. Little boy painting his nails, wearing a hair long, putting on an Elsa dress. Like those things should be acceptable with nothing to do with sexuality for a young boy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to hear Rumpel's uh, thoughts on why, you know, again, I think it just comes back to this idea of having all this programming like a quota um, and we have, we have to fill certain quotas with, you know, I, I don't know. So Sabi says, as someone who was on Tumblr in 2016, the main breeding ground for all of this, the intention is almost entirely sexual. It was a grooming hellhole. Uh, Rumple Gold says it gives me gives me dysphoria and it leaves me feeling like that I'm I'm uh, like I'm not uh, I'm not a passing, passing man. man. I'm a man. Uh, I'm a man. I'm not trans. You know what I mean? It's the it's othering. Hmm. I don't wait. I need to unpack that. So he doesn't like trans programming because it makes him feel othered. Like you're somebody other than who you like. Are. It's a, like, like it's a third. It's not male, female, not man, woman, but like a third trans where okay. I, think, I think i think what rumple is saying is he that wants to identify he is a man yeah yes. and so so stop trying to make him a third category 
Right. I get that. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So now we have to have like this list of it, it was LGBTQ a few like months ago. Right. Now we, we we're adding on these additional. Okay. As uh, right. No, I actually Ab- Abigail Schreier makes that point is that like trans people do not want to fight. They want to identify as the gender that they're choosing. Period. Let me fit in. Let me not have a fight with everybody. You know. Right. Um. And just be a woman or be a man. Live and, your life. Yeah. yeah. And and I get that. Yeah. Um, thank you for for bringing that point in. That I, point. I lacked the perspective of that. All right, great discussion here. So, I don't think you're going to see this discussion really on on CNN Plus. Um, but uh, thank Maybe. you for having a good discussion here. But I wanted to bring that to you. I mean, this was leaked video from this Disney meeting, and there's this battle unfolding in Florida, and you get to hear what this big corporation is trying to do about it, and it's worth having a broader discussion about it. The nuance here uh, is important, I think. If you like this content, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, we have a membership program. For the price of a cup of coffee once a month, you can support independent journalism just by going to morninginvest.com join. You get access to exclusive videos, plus the ability to join and chat with us live. We really appreciate your subscription, and you are supporting independent journalism.